Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Mongolian Death Worm. This movie tells the story of a treasure hunter trapped in the desert and must face giant worms that prey on humans. Will they be able to escape from the predators of the desert? Let's find out in Mongolian Death Worm. Mongolian Death Worm started in an oil refinery in Mongolia that was experiencing engine failure problems. The field manager, Patrick, seemed to be scolding his men because of the frequent failure of the earth drilling pump engine lately. Patrick then ordered one of his men named Tolly to come over and talk about shipping and transporting goods. Shortly after, the factory alarm sounded, signaling another engine failure. Patrick rushed to check it and had one of the factory workers fix the pump engine there. While repairing the machine, the factory worker heard a loud growl from the ground. The worker looked for the source of the growling sound until, in the end, a giant worm suddenly emerged from the ground and preyed on the worker. The next day, a man named Daniel was involved in a chase with a gang of local thugs. Daniel drove his car at high speed, but the thugs were no less speeding while occasionally firing shots at his car. The chase was finally stopped by a local policeman, named Timmer, who was patrolling the street. Seeing the police, the gang of thugs immediately turned around and fled from there. Daniel is a treasure hunter who deliberately came to the area to look for ancient treasures left by Genghis Khan. While on a search, he gets into trouble and ends up having to deal with a gang of thugs led by Cowan. The policeman, named Timmer, warns Daniel not to get into trouble with the Cowan gang because they are notoriously violent. In a remote village called Sepigal, a female doctor named Steffi is busy treating the villagers who are stricken with a disease outbreak. The residents fell ill because the river water in their village was contaminated with toxic substances, and it is not known what caused it. A local midwife, Thuan, only assisted Steffi. Due to the lack of medical personnel and medicines, the death rate from this deadly epidemic is increasing every day. Steffi was waiting for her colleague who was on their way to Sepigal to bring the medicines needed by the villagers. Elsewhere, two people are seen having problems with their car. Steffi's companions, Alicia and Philip, were on their way to Sepigal to bring medicine. Their car had an engine failure in the middle of the road, and now they are waiting for a passing car on the road to ask for help. Shortly after, Timmer passed the road. He stops the car and asks about their problem. Unfortunately, Timmer couldn't give Alicia and Philip a lift due to an emergency call from another village. Daniel, who happened to be passing by, was stopped by Timmer and asked him to take Alicia and Philip to Sepigal. Daniel was reluctant to take them because he wanted to continue the search for his treasure. But Timmer insisted. After the policeman left, Daniel told Alicia and Philip that he would give them a ride as long as they paid for it. Alicia was annoyed, but she and Philip had no other choice. They finally collected the money and gave it to Daniel. Meanwhile, Tali notices a large hole in the site at the oil refinery where one of the factory workers disappeared near the pumping machine last night. He told Patrick a Mongolian myth about the sudden appearance of a large hole in the ground which was a sign that the death worm had awakened from its slumber. Patrick ignored Tali's words. He insisted that all broken machines be repaired immediately. Elsewhere, a factory worker was in the basement checking machines when he heard a loud growl coming from the room's dark side. The worker rushed to check it, and suddenly a giant worm appeared, grabbed the worker with its long tongue, and disappeared without a trace. Patrick looked worried when he saw a black car entering the factory premises. What he was worried about happened. One of the company's officials came to the factory as a representative from the head office to investigate the machine breakdowns that often occur recently. Patrick's boss is named Brixler. He threatened to fire Patrick if the matter was not resolved quickly. After Brixler left, Tolly approached Patrick and expressed the same concern. Patrick and Tolly are hiding a secret that causes the machine to fail so often. Patrick was worried that his boss would find out about the secret if he did a thorough inspection of the factory. He had to act quickly so that Brixler wouldn't know his secret, or he would be in big trouble. Elsewhere, Daniel's car suddenly broke down in the middle of the road because the engine was overheating. He then suggested that they hide in the forest because the gangs of Cowan thugs always cross the road at night. Alicia and Philip initially refused because they didn't believe his words. But in the end, they agreed to hide in the forest because they thought of the dangers that lurked on the streets at night. Alicia and Daniel, who initially didn't get along and often disagreed in the car, seemed to find a connected topic of conversation and no longer argued much. Even though they had been hiding in the middle of the forest, Cowan's thugs managed to find them and arrested the three towards Cowan's headquarters. They arrived at Cowan's headquarters in the morning and were immediately taken to Cowan's tent. Apparently the reason Daniel became Cowan's target was that he had barged into their territory while looking for treasure. He then got a hard slap from Cowan. Daniel begged Cowan not to kill him and promised to give half the profit if he managed to find the ancient treasure. Obviously, Cowan was annoyed and landed a hard kick in his face. Daniel, Alicia, and Philip end up being held hostage by Cowan in a tent. 
Back at the factory, Brixler insists on checking the underground drilling, even though Patrick has given multiple excuses that there's nothing there and the faulty engine has been fixed. Brixler ignored Patrick's explanation and wanted to open the door anyway. Patrick reached for the gun behind his back, intent on killing his boss there. But Tali rushes in and says Brixler got a call from head office. Brixler finally left. At Cowan's headquarters, Daniel manages to untie himself with a knife and free Alicia and Philip. They immediately devised a plan to escape from there. Daniel manages to sneak into one of the tents and steal a rifle. He then hides behind a car and shoots at Cowan's thugs one by one. Gunfights are inevitable. Alicia and Philip took the opportunity to run out to a car and then fled from there. Daniel is almost in a pinch because Cowan and his gang hurl bullets at him. But then help came from something unexpected. A swarm of giant Mongolian worms appears and begins to prey on the hordes of thugs, including their leader. Daniel saw the fuel tank near the location where the giant worm had appeared and immediately shot it with the remaining bullets. A great explosion occurred and burned the giant worm. Alicia and Philip make it to the location where Daniel's car broke down. They immediately transferred medical supplies and drugs from Patrick's car to the car they were using. Philip looks worried for Daniel and intends to come back to help him, but Alicia refuses because she believes Daniel can take care of himself. They had to hurry to Sepagal because the sick villagers were waiting for the medicines. While at the oil refinery, Brixler reported to the headquarters in America that the factory had to close temporarily because the damage was so severe. Not only that, they also had to bring in experts to repair the engine. While Brixler was still on the phone, Patrick suddenly came and hung up the phone. He then threatens Brixler with a gun and locks his boss in the basement. Daniel finally manages to escape from Cowlin's headquarters and head for his car. Luckily, the car engine started again, and he fled from there immediately. But when he was about to back the car, a giant Mongolian worm jumped on the hood of his car, and the other worms started arriving. Daniel did not flinch, he reversed the car, managed to knock the giant worm off the hood, and hit another giant worm. Alicia and Philip finally arrived at Sepagal. They then brought the medicines to Steffi and Thuin to give to sick villagers. Not long after, Daniel arrived in Sepagal. He warns Alicia and the others to move the patients to a safer place because giant Mongolian worms have started to roam near Sepagal. Alicia says that her phone doesn't work here. A local resident told them they could call and ask for help at a nearby oil refinery. Daniel and Alicia decided to seek help at the factory. Patrick and Tali rush to move a large crate from the basement to their truck at the refinery. The chest contains the ancient treasure of Genghis Khan, which has been the target of Daniel's search. Patrick managed to find a treasure tunnel while drilling for oil some time ago. Tempted to become rich, he ordered his men to drill deeper using a superheated high-voltage drilling machine. His greed wreaks havoc. The giant Mongolian worm, which had been sleeping peacefully for so long, finally woke up and started crawling out of the ground. After the sudden appearance of a large hole in the ground in the factory area, all factory employees went on strike for fear of the appearance of a giant worm that had only become a legend. It was very quiet at the factory when Daniel and Alicia arrived there. The two of them were then startled by a violent tremor on the ground. They were greeted with a gun from one of the factory employees. The factory worker named Bonna did not allow Daniel and Alicia to enter the factory. But Alicia explained their purpose and revealed her identity as a doctor. Bonna was touched by Alicia's actions. He then allowed Alicia to use the phone at the factory. Giant worms began to burst out of their nests and roam the factory area. A giant worm tries to attack Daniel and Alicia, but Bonna manages to kill it. Meanwhile, a giant worm slithered down the pillar where Brixler was being bound in the dungeon. Seeing the huge, hideous creature, Brixler struggled, trying to free himself from his bonds. But of course, his efforts were in vain, and in the end, he became the food of the Mongolian giant worm. In the village of Sepegal, Philip and Thuin were about to fetch water from a well. Thuin went up to the mouth of the well to draw water. After drawing several buckets of water, she suddenly fell into the well. Philip, who panicked, then shouted for help until Steffi came. They were about to look into the well, but suddenly the well water, which was contaminated with Thuin's blood, spurted out of the well, and giant worms appeared out of the well. Luckily, Alicia managed to contact Timur and asked him to check the situation in Sepagal village because a giant worm appeared nearby. Timur immediately rushed, and just as Alicia said, the giant worms had surrounded the village. Timur grabbed his rifle and managed to kill all the worms. Back at the factory, Daniel and Bonner rushed to the basement, trying to turn off the drilling machines because they are the ones that cause giant worms to wake up and terrorize the area. Daniel and Bonner then heard a growl there. Bonner immediately ran away because it indicated that there was a giant worm near them. But Daniel then remembered the myth that if you find a den of death worms, then the location of Genghis Khan's treasure is also there. Outside the factory, Bonner meets Patrick and Tali, who has just arrived. 
Bonna then warns them to leave the factory immediately. But Patrick asks why the drilling machine is not working. Bonna says that he deliberately turned off the drilling machine. Hearing this, Patrick then got angry and shot him in the head. Alicia is on the phone with the military and tells about the giant worm attack in the Sepago village and the oil refinery. Alicia asked for help as soon as possible because the lives of the people here were in danger if the giant worms continued to roam. But then Patrick and Tolly came and threatened her with a gun. Patrick forces Alicia to come with him to the basement to catch Daniel. Daniel finally finds a treasure tunnel in the underground drilling room that Patrick and Tolly have been keeping secret for so long. Daniel was annoyed that the location of the ancient treasure he was looking for turned out to be under an oil refinery factory. Patrick and Tolly finally reach the basement. Patrick threatens Daniel and takes Alicia hostage. When Patrick's attention is drawn to the location of Brixler being held hostage, Daniel immediately attacks him, and the two get into a fist fight. When Daniel and Patrick were still fighting, suddenly giant worms appeared from the tunnel. Some are even larger than other worms. As the giant worms appeared, the ground beneath them shook violently. Everyone rushed to save themselves from being eaten by giant worms. But Tolly's fate was not as lucky as the others. A giant worm devoured him to nothing. Daniel and Alicia made it out of the dungeon. But as they walked down the hall at the factory, Daniel was curious about the pile of wooden crates in a room. He then opened the chests and surprised him because the wooden chests contained Patrick's treasures from the tunnel. Daniel was faced with two difficult choices, save his life or transport the treasure chest. While Daniel is still hesitating, Patrick arrives who points a gun at him because he thinks Daniel will steal his treasure. Unexpectedly, Timmer came and pointed his rifle at Patrick. Patrick was getting more desperate because suddenly, a giant worm appeared behind him and devoured him. Daniel finally decides to blow up the oil refinery and blow up the nest of the giant Mongolian queen worm. He no longer cared about treasure. Daniel and Alicia started the pump again and raised the pressure to the maximum limit. They rushed out of there because the factory was about to explode. But giant worms appeared and swarmed over them. Timmer managed to kill the worms. But unlucky, he ends up being eaten by the giant Mongolian worm queen who appears behind him. The ground shook violently. The pump engine started to smoke, and the fire had spread throughout the factory. Daniel and Alicia continued to flee until they finally managed to get out of the factory area to coincide with a huge explosion that destroyed the nest and killed all the giant worms there. Daniel had a stroke of luck because the explosion blew out the ancient treasure buried beneath the factory. He then escorted Alicia back to Sepagol village. He said goodbye to her, and he returned to the factory to collect the treasures scattered there. Daniel then promised to donate his wealth for the construction of a hospital in the village. He did not forget to return the money given by Alicia as the cost of taking them to Sepagol. The film ends.